I'm a coffee snob. Uh, I, I bring in coffees and I grind them and I, I absolutely love coffee. But if you want to make the best coffee ice cream, the taster's choice works better than anything. The freeze-dried crystals will dissolve in the ice cream about 99%, which means every once in a while you get a little crunch. And I make it very strong, uh, even though when you taste it today, it'll be stronger tomorrow. Uh, my theory is, if you're a tea drinker, you're not gonna go into an ice cream parlor and order, order coffee ice cream. You don't like coffee. But if you're a coffee drinker, you like a good cup of coffee, and I want it a good strong cup. So I use the taster's choice, and then uh, Gary the curmudgeon up in Massachusetts said, well, coffee has a bite to it, especially these uh, freeze-dried coffees, which are, you know, in the realm of coffee are cheap. Uh, expensive, but cheap. Uh, he said, put a few squirts of Hershey syrup in it. It'll take away the bite, uh, but you'll never taste the chocolate. And it works just beautifully. The coffee. I don't know who's going to clean this mess. I guess it's going to be me. I have an opinion on everything. Um, <laughs> I, when waffle cones first came out, it, there was a store uh, up on the Upper West Side of Manhattan that bought his ice cream and introduced waffle cones. And uh, so I went in and said, uh, you know, you really ought to, you know, you're starting to get some traction here. You all really ought to make your I your own ice cream. Oh, the ice cream doesn't matter. They're coming in here for the cones. And so I asked a partner, I said, did you ever walk into an ice cream parlor just because of the cone? You know, that's a little ridiculous. Um, I, I think, but that said, I think they're okay, but they do raise the price of the product. And, uh, you know, so someone says, someone invariably is gonna say, well, why is Susie's ice cream cone 325 and mine is 4, 440? Well, because you got a, yours in a waffle cone. Well, they think the waffle cone should cost the same as the regular cone. And, and that's a problem. And I don't know a way around it. So I'm kind of against them. So, oh, you can do all sorts of fun things. But then again, you gotta ask yourself, are you a bakery or are you uh, an ice cream parlor? And if you're gonna upset them with the pricing because they are gonna cost you more. I think, I, I think from what I've experienced, I think most people expect that they work for a waffle cone. Mm -hmm. I, I, that would be my guess. But, but if you had your own ice cream place, am I hearing you right, you would not do waffle cones? I would want to concentrate on the ice cream, what I do best, and not get into baking. Okay, so I've just put the taster's choice in there, about uh, five ounces. A little bit of Hershey's. Farfars, yeah, very not well. I got a great story about Farfars. Which is Danish for uh, grandfather. My daughter's when I used to bring her up there to that. She's always had to have the bubble gum. Huh. Um, this gentleman over here brought up a name I hadn't heard in years, but I often tell people about it, uh, called Farfar's, Dan Farfar's Ice Cream. Farfar is uh, Danish uh, for grandfather. And uh, they always made their own ice cream on my machines. And when the grandfather retired, he moved out to, uh, I think, the Seattle or Washington area um, to retire. And like anybody who's been in the ice cream business, he, re he remained retired for about five minutes and then got bored. And he did something that I thought was absolutely 
fantastic. And maybe when I get to about 85, I'll consider doing it. And that is, he said, I know all about the ice cream business. And there are, and this is before I did these classes or anything like this, or before anybody was doing anything. And he said, I know all about the ice cream business, and I'll bet you I could charge, say, $30,000 to teach, help someone get into the ice cream business. So instead of opening up a franchise like a Rita's or something, uh, Farfars said, okay, uh, give me $10,000 up front, and I start off with our book that we send you, which you, you know, would generate on a computer nowadays of uh, all about how to get into the ice cream business and how to do a store and all. And then uh, the second 10,000, he would help you find a location and uh, check it out and make sure it's good. He would help you buy the equipment, not necessarily getting discounts, but you know, buying the proper equipment. That's the next 20,000. And then the uh, 10,000. Then the last 10,000, he would come out for a week and teach you how to run the store and make all the ice cream. When he was all finished, he'd walk away. And you can use his name if you want. You can, um, uh, you know, he'll be around for as long as he's around. He'll be able to answer questions for you, so you're not paying franchise fees. And the interesting thing about it is he advertised this in the Wall Street Journal, which cost him a lot of money. But the Wall Street Journal is hitting a very high uh, clientele, and so he got people like yourselves, and before I was doing this, who were motivated to. Uh, before this, there was no way to know how to get into the ice cream business. And if this guy did, you know, three ice cream parlors a year, that's ninety thousand dollars in his retirement. I thought that's a pretty clever, clever idea. And um, these are ch mini chocolate chips. We, we sell this for sixty-five dollars, and it's got absolutely everything: apricot brandy sorbet, um, fragola gelato. Hmm. Yeah, we sell it. We got them here. Here's the Grand Manier liqueur ice cream. Uh, what's even better is in the very back, he's got a bibliography and an appendix of businesses that both he and I agree are the very best. We, we agreed with each other many years ago that we would never take a dime from any manufacturer or supplier because you just can't be honest if you're beholden to someone else. And so we only recommend someone if they're fantastic. And so that's all in here. Uh, for new businesses, he explains what the equipment does. Uh, the only downside to this book is he can get a little exotic. I'll give you an example. Um, Malcolm's peach ice cream. Let me see how I'm doing here. Let me speed this up a little. Um, Malcolm, a typical recipe will be for peach ice cream will be the ice cream mix. Uh, fresh peaches where you blanch them in hot water to peel them off, and then something called peach paste, which is only, it comes out of Italy. And uh, I don't have peach paste. So um, what I do is, since I don't have the ingredient, uh, I just add more peaches. So it's that simple. Oh, which is fine. Because, I mean, it's a lot easier than putting fruit in. I mean, fruit is weight and stress. Uh, puree is simple. But it doesn't affect the consistency when it makes it? No. Uh-uh. You need to look at that. Uh, but that's, that, is a, that is the Bible of uh, ice cream books. Now, see how that cuts off like a knife? Can you see this? Right there, that means it's ready. So I'm going to open that up. I'm going to speed it up. That noise is the gas has not gotten away from the barrel yet. If I wanted to uh, avoid that noise, I would turn off the refrigeration and then let it just run for 30 seconds and it wouldn't make that noise. But I'm pulling out faster than... Uh, 
to help push it out. It just gets the job done faster. So this is a, um, remember the last one was 140 RPM? This is 165. This is what I would call a super premium. Uh, it's lighter than the 140 RPM, but it's much richer than uh, a homemade. And you can see it's, it's rock solid. It's great stuff. So come on up and try this. This is the last thing we're going to make, and then I'll give you a tour of the factory. Sammy, come here, girl.